This world is completely endless and you will learn how to create beautiful worlds like this right now. This infinite terrain we made in the last episode sucks. To make it beautiful we will use three techniques. The first one is auto material. Also if you want to steal, <coughs> I mean download all my code with this project, you can go to my Patreon. Now let's start. Create new material function, call it something like make material, open it, add the make material attributes node, add three texture sample nodes, select all of them, in sampler source choose shared wrap, it will optimize the material a little bit, then plug them like me. Add the function input, choose texture to d type, copy it two times, let's uh, rename them and connect each of them with texture samples. ORDP stands for occlusion roughness displacement. If you don't have this texture you can click on ORDP input, set preview value x to 0.5, y to 1 and tick use preview value as default. Next add the absolute world position node, add component mask. Add multiply, create new function input but now choose scalar type. It will be responsible for texture size so I will name it scale. Drag the output to UVs. And we are finally done with this function. So save it, create new material, open it, drag our function from content drawer, add your slope textures, convert each to texture object, connect with make material. For scale create new scalar parameter, it should be between 0 and 1 so I will set slider max to 1 and for default value I will set this number, copy everything, change slope textures to your main material textures, add blend material attributes node, I will collapse these nodes, now create world line blend node, drag explicit normal to alpha, create new parameters for sharpness and bias break material attributes and finally connect everything together. There are many other things that can be added to improve the material like snow starting at specific height, material variation, distance blend, but that's beyond the scope of this video. Psst. If you want me to make a video about that let me know in the comments. Let's check the result. Set material to the one we have just created. I will tweak landscape parameters a little bit. Hit play. And it looks much better, but still boring. To fix this, let's use height curve. I will explain. Our noise function always returns a number between minus 1 and 1. And then we multiply this number by that multiplier to get final height. But the problem is that our terrain is pretty repetitive and looks identical everywhere. And it is where curves can help us. Let me create a new float curve. I will call it planes and mountains. Horizontal axis represents what our noise function returns. As you remember this value is always between minus 1 and 1. Vertical axis represents what we get after applying the curve. Actually we can imagine that currently our terrain uses a curve that looks like this. Just a linear graph. It returns what it gets. For example if noise function returns 0.5 we will get 0.5. But what if I want our terrain to have a lot of planes and sometimes mountains. In this case, I have to make a curve that is similar to this. Let me just show you. To apply this curve, we have to go to our chunk, create a new variable, type curve float, track this variable, call function get float value, connect noise function output with time, multiply output by z multiplier, open landscape class, go to set chunk parameters function, create height curve variable here too. I also want to delete this whole function and just collapse uh, this logic because we use it only once. Let me quickly fix all these warnings by replacing this variable with global chunk variable. Ok, set chunks height curve. Finally we need to go to the level and in landscape details select our height curve. I will also increase Z multiplier. Let's try it. It seems we don't have a lot of planes. Let me change our curve a little bit. 
Let's run it again. Now the terrain has a lot of plains and high mountains, but there is still not enough variation. To make landscape more diverse, we can use multiple noises. Create a new structure called noise parameters. Then we need to add all the variables under noise section in chunk class to this structure. I added all the variables, set their default values. We have to remove these variables from chunk class, but before that go to landscape. Remove all noise variables from here. Compile save. Go to chunk. Generate function. Delete all these. Go to calculate Z. Remove height curve and noise variables from the graph. Delete all noise variables. Create new variable called noise parameters. Type noise parameters of course. And it should be array. Return to generate function. Add another variable called noises. It will be array of fast noise wrappers. Get uh, noise parameters. Call for each loop. Create local variable called noise index. Now we just need to create and set up our noises. It's pretty simple. And that's it. I will collapse that. Next we need to go to create vertices function and open calculate that graph. So we should iterate again through our noise parameters array to sum up values of all noises inside that array and multiply final value by that multiplier. For that we need a new local float variable that will store sum of all noises. Then we should simply sum up values together by iterating through every noise. I will show how to do that in a moment. So here is how to implement that. Don't forget to connect this graph in create vertices function. Also, I will collapse a few nodes inside it. <music> Lastly, go back to landscape class, delete all noise variables here as well, add noise parameters variable. And set noise parameters variable of chunk. You can download everything shown in this video and more from my Patreon. Let's return to the scene, click on our landscape, and now you should be able to add as many noises as you want. If you play around with these curves and tweak different parameters, you can achieve results like this. Stop, 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 you see this? These super ugly sims between chunks. To eliminate them, watch this video.